Say hello to the Epiphone Muse lineup. As part of the Inspired by Gibson collection and Modern Les Pauls, I wanted to review one of these ever since I saw them for the first time after NAM 2020. And now I got not just one but three, the gorgeous purple passion, the scarlet red and the jet black. In fact, I've already had some time with the purple passion and I'm gonna straight up say it, this is one of the best epiphones that I have ever reviewed. Almost too good to be true, in fact I'm gonna do the two guitars are never the same thing and review the red scarlet as well just to make sure that it's not a fluke and these are absolutely amazing. <laughs> I am rarely surprised by any guitar, but this thing caught me off guard, especially for the price point for around $500. It is super cool, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. What is a Muse? I know what you're thinking, yes, it is a British band, but besides looking cool, has nothing to do with them. It is a Greek goddess of arts and it means a source of inspiration. It also happens to be a part of the Inspired by Gibson Modern Les Paul collection. In Epiphone's official website, you're gonna find it right next to the Les Paul Modern figure, which we will also review soon. The first thing you notice about these cool Les Paul Muses are the awesome metallic finishes that they come with. The Wanderlust Green, Pearl White Metallic, Radio Blue Metallic, the Smoked Almond Metallic, and then we got the Star, the Purple Passion Metallic. As of right now, the Red Scarlet and the Jet Black are no longer part of the official website, but I'm gonna show them to you anyway. Besides the mesmerizing, vibrant colors, what sets the Les Paul Muses apart from other guitars? Could it be the soft and mellow classic Aonico Pro humbuckers? These transform your inspiration into sound and they are extremely versatile with co-split capabilities and a phase switch. Could it be this Les Paul body that is not only slimmer, but it's also chambered to make it extremely lightweight. The answer is simple, it's all of the above. Here's the interesting thing, if you're judging by the names of the colors, you got purple passion, you have smoked almond, all of the sparkly metallic finishes, you might assume that Epiphone is aiming for the female players, even the commercial of the Epiphone Muse includes a female musician in it. And that's gonna be partially true, because every time a girl walks into the shop, they notice the purple passion first. But I said partially true, because I would gladly buy one of these for myself. And do you know why? Because after owning God knows how many black guitars, you want an interesting finish. I would rock the hell out of that purple passion or the scarlet red on stage. I mean, I had a square hello kitty, why do you think that I'm ashamed to go out with a purple guitar? I don't care man, it looks fantastic in person and it's greatly built. Yep, that's the other thing that caught me off guard, I was expecting the QC on these to be horrible, but no, the Chinese factory actually did a wonderful job and these are amazing, especially considering how much they cost. 
As usual, here's the official listing in the Epiphone website. I'm gonna give you guys a couple of seconds on screen and then I'm gonna show you the specs. Body, neck, and you got the hardware, electronics, and other. Now let's see these in person. But first things first, gotta do the satisfying thing. Ah. On to the specs. We have a mahogany body, hard maple top, and this gorgeous purple passion metallic finish. Then we have a mahogany neck with a set neck construction, a custom C-shaped neck profile, Indian laurel fingerboard, 22 median jumbo frets and trapezoid perloid inlays, a newborn Graftec nut inspired by Gibson headstock with the golden silk screen and Epiphone perloid logo Grover 18 to 1 ratio tuners, a set of Aonico Classic Pro humbuckers with the traditionally positioned controls over here. Epiphone lock tone, locking bridge and a tailpiece. The pickups, these are indeed classic. They are soft. The bridge measures at 7.88. The neck is at 7.52. And the middle position is 3.84. That is pretty low. But check this out. We have the split as well. So we have the bridge at 7.88. When we split it, we have 3.99. Switching over to the neck again with the split here we go 752 split 378 and we can go even lower with the middle position splitting both pickups here's the middle with the bridge split 260 now splitting the neck as well and i think that's the lowest i've ever measured at 194. the face switch doesn't affect the ohms before measuring the pickups, I would like to explain the controls. We have the traditional scheme, two volumes, two tones. We have bridge volume, neck volume, bridge tone, and neck tone. These are four conductor pickups, so we have a coil split for each of them. A push-pull pot in the bridge volume splits the bridge pickup to single. A push-pull volume pot splits the neck pickup to single as well. The bridge tone is just your regular solder on pot, but it has a treble bleed capacitor. The neck tone is a face switch. If you don't know what a face switch is, look it up in YouTube. Here's a top-down view of the controls. They are smooth and easy to operate. I love the fact that Epiphone went with clear speed knobs for the Muse series. Very distinctive. A three-way selector switch. No poker chip not to cover this gorgeous finish. No surprises for the bridge and tailpiece. The trusty Epiphone lock tone. The ABR style of bridge with individual saddles held in place by a single spring, although this one is metric, adjusted by a thumb wheel and flathead screwdriver. A chrome Epiphone lock tone tailpiece to go with the bridge. The body features a single ply cream binding around the top, not on the bottom obviously. The binding of course stops at the neck joint and check this out. There's not supposed to be any paint on the edge of the fingerboard that overlaps the body, but I kind of like it in this case. The top-down view reminds me of this metallic cool finish. We have a mahogany neck with a set neck construction and binding with black side dot inlays. And here's the only QC issue that I managed to find on this Muse. Nothing too serious, mind you, and these skinny medium jumbo frets have some glue around them over here on around the 12 fret, but I think I'm gonna be able to take care of that. I'm gonna condition the frets and the fingerboard anyway. It's gonna freshen up nicely. Honestly, I'm blown away by the quality of this Muse. The Indian Laurel fingerboard looks good, the pearloid inlays are great. I wasn't expecting it to be that good. What do we got for the nut? We have Graftec New Bone. And for the Muse series, I actually approve of the cheaper New Bone. It makes sense for a $500 guitar. It didn't make sense for the Prophecies, which are $900. The headstock has the inspired by Gibson shape. Les Paul Golden Silk Screen. I am loving the Perloid Epiphone logo. These Grover's 18 to 1 ratio are a good addition too. This is what the truss rod cavity looks like. Look at this hole. I saw a similar one when reviewing the Xtura recently. Back then I thought it was a mistake but now I see it's marked so it serves a purpose of some kind. If any of you guys has an idea why is it for, let me know in the comments. Is it some sort of center point to adjust the routing machine? I guess I have to further investigate. Here's another angle of the truss rod cavity, two-way adjustable truss rod in it. The truss rod is covered by this Epiphone traditional bell with three screws, two ply, 
written on it, Les Paul Muse, again, has nothing to do with the band Muse. It's an inspiration thing. The nut is a bit narrower than usual at 41.5mm or 1.63, but if you measure after it, we got 42mm or 1.65 inch. The 12th fret measures at 52mm or 2.04 inches. Thickness at the first fret 21mm or 0.82 inch. The 12th fret measures a bit chunkier at 0.95 inch, but this is where the neck heel starts. The Muse has a thinner body at 1.69 inch, usually the full thickness less poles measure around 2 inches. This does feature a curved hard maple top though. A 12 inch radius throughout, as it should be on a less pole. In the specs, Epiphone claimed that they have a custom C profile for the neck. I don't trust nobody though, so I'm always checking. I guess they were not lying. I see a lot of shoulder towards the low E strings and rounded off towards the high E, almost like the asymmetrical but not that pronounced like on the prophecies. This is where the binding of the body meets the binding of the neck. We have a set neck construction with a heel, a black finished neck, a scarf joint, no volute, QC sticker handcrafted in China, Grover 18 to 1 ratio tuners, and the serial number is a bit hard to read so I'm gonna give you another angle of it. Here it is, 21, 12, 15. It was made in December 2021. 15 indicates the Quindao Chinese factory. These were made in December 2021. Now we're at the end of 2022, so I have to condition the fingerboard and polish the frets. There we go. I oiled the fingerboard, I polished the frets, and I've cleaned the glue, and I can't believe I'm gonna say this. I actually prefer the fingerboard to be lighter brown in color. It goes pretty well together with the purple metallic finish. Eh, the oil is gonna wear out eventually and it's gonna become lighter in color again. Remember guys, you're supposed to condition those fingerboards every 4 or 5 months. I'm pleasantly surprised that I didn't have to struggle too much to get a decent action. No string bus, comfortable throughout the entire neck, it's probably because of these skinny medium jumbo frets. I only had to adjust the bridge height, I didn't have to touch the truss rod at all. I am absolutely mind blown by this guitar so far. With all the chambering and the thinner body shouldn't come as a surprise that it's light, under 8 pounds. Before I start with my tone demo, I wanna apologize that you're gonna have to see this in 4K. You see what happened is that I watched 3 Spider-Man movies in a row, and then I intentionally got bitten by a huge spider in order to get superpowers. Didn't work and I'm super sleepy now.
Well, there you go. Once again, I'm gonna say it. The Epiphone Muse absolutely blew me away. I am gonna do a double take by reviewing the Red Scarlet as well, but so far is looking good. I was expecting it to be all show and no go for that price point. It has roughly the same price as the EC256 Eclipse series of LTD guitars, which means that a lot of people are gonna be choosing between the Muse and the LTDs. And honestly, if I have to choose between the Muse and the EC256, I would go with the Muse. They're just a little bit more interesting to me with all the cool finishes with the inspired by Gibson body shape headstock. I mean, to me they're just cooler. And get this, as I was ordering all of the Epiphone Muses for the shop, my colleagues said, oh a purple Les Paul, who's gonna buy this? The Les Paul sold as I was making this video. I knew that it was gonna be one of the first to go. I mean, why wouldn't you get one? It's properly priced, it's part of the Inspired by Gibson collection, it has the headstock resembling the Gibson one, it sounds and plays well, it's easy to set up, it's a no-brainer. If you're looking for a cool affordable Les Paul, look no further, get one of the muses and let it inspire you to write the best music that you can.